Hello everyone and welcome to another video and we are back after last week with a fully fledged Daily Race C strategy guide. This week we are visiting World Swings International Raceway in the US of A and we are in Group 4 Machinery. So the settings for this one are fairly interesting I think we have to say. It looks like we're going to have a mandatory tyre with the Racing Hard and the Racing Mediums both available so we we'll shall treat this guide as though the hard tyre is mandatory. Tyre wear is at times 7 fuel consumption at times 2, 15 laps ground and we have a grid start with a false start check. So welcome to Willow Springs International Raceway, better known as Big Willow in California, United States of America. A deceptively uh, simple looking track but very very tricky to get really good consistency and to find that uh, ideal lap time. And there's always the danger of a misplaced tyre putting you into the boonies. So I'm not entirely sure what cars are going to be popular for this one. Traditionally, eh, cars like the Renault Megane Trophy, eh, the Toyota 86 and the Alfa Romeo 4C have always dominated this eh, combination. But with the sort of bop changes in the last few months, I'm not entirely sure they're going to be as strong as they used to be. Eh, so I think a few other cars maybe will come to the fore. And I think the sort of settings for the race means that more than a handful of cars that should be competitive. So let's move on to take a look at a closer look at some of the features of this race. As I said, this one has a grid start with a false start check. It's not completely rare to see in the daily race C, but it is pretty rare to see that in a race car category. So I do think that's a nice little change to the format for this race. And it's going to make that opening corner and first lap pretty hectic. Uh, the first corner of this track I would stress to try and get to the inside because if you find yourself on the outside, end up with a wheel on the sand, you're going to be in pretty big trouble. And whilst the Group 4 cars are not too bad off the line without traction control, I would recommend putting it on to at least one for getting off the line. So moving on to the pit loss and fuel. Fuel straight away, zero issues with the fuel, it's only at times two, so forget about that. As for the pit loss, it has always been a fairly quick pit loss uh, or pit stop at Willow Springs and that pit loss comes in at just a shade under 6 seconds. So there is definitely scope for some strategy, bearing in mind we've got some mandatory tyres to run and we've got a fairly short pit, uh, pit loss there. So let's move on and take a look at some uh, different strategies and sort of different ways that you can approach this race. And first up we're going to take a look at the traditional one stop strategy. So as I said, we're going to treat this guide as if the hard tyre are mandatory. Uh, obviously I don't know that at this point. Generally when we've got both the medium and the hard tyres available, it's just the hard tyre that's mandatory. But on the other occasion, both the medium and the hard tyre are mandatory. But uh, on this strategy here, we are doing a one stop. We've started on the medium tyres and I've found the sort of lap 10 is round about where the tyres have started to so I give up and I thought I'd be better off on the hard tyre. Now we are in the Ferrari 458 Italia, I did forget to mention that earlier on in the video. That's the car I've chosen to do my strategy runs in. Uh, I don't know how good a car it will be. did test a few cars, uh, the McLaren and I think I tried the Supra as well. Uh, and this definitely felt like the best out of the three cars that I tried. So end of lap 10 here, we're going to come off those medium tyres. As you can see, they did. if you look back in the video, they did look a little bit worn. And they certainly were starting to give up uh, the grip at that point. Nothing too major, it's not like the car was feeling really difficult to control, it just felt in the middle sector we were starting to sort of lose quite a lot of time. And as we move on to the end of this run here, we moved on to the hard tyres, so we did five laps in the hard tyres, I think we actually hit the sweet spot in terms of changing tyres. So our last flying lap on the medium tyres was a 118.7 and our first flying lap on the hard tyres was also a 118.7 and we've kept it in the 18s all the way so it definitely looks like that was pretty much spot on for changing the tyres on this car. So 10 laps on the medium, 5 laps on the hard seems to work out quite well for the Ferrari. So coming into the last corner here, always got to be very very careful at the last corner, uh, trying not to end up uh, flying off the track. If you end up off the track at the last corner it takes you a lifetime to get back on. But we're going to come across the line here to finish the 15 laps. We'll get the finishing time up on the screen. There we go. Eight, oh, sorry, 19 minutes 50.314. So that is the benchmark so far. Let's move on to take a look at another strategy and see if this one is any quicker. So next up we have the two stop strategy. Uh, with that pit loss being pretty short, only I think it actually works out at 5.8 seconds, so just a shade under 6 seconds. 
there's definitely a lot of potential to do a double stint on the medium tyres, just do a single lap on the hard tyres and maybe get like an undercut around about lap 7 and uh, maybe get ahead of some of the traffic you're fighting with or a quicker tyre, see if you can build up a gap and then come in uh, on the last lap and see if you can sort of stay ahead. So we're going to sort of join this run here on lap 11, we've already done the first stint on the medium tyres, we pitted on lap 7, uh, we've got another set of mediums and we're going to run these tyres till uh, the end of lap 14 and then come in and just do a single lap on the hard tyres at the end. So we've got the fuel meter up for this one, uh, I think that's the first bit of footage where we've had that up, so you can see that fuel's absolutely no issue whatsoever. We're on lap 11 here and we have 20 laps left in the tank according to that. So I think we're going to maybe use up around about half the tank over the course of the race. So there's that a gap between your first uh, stint and your second stint lap times is not as big as you may expect because by the time you pit you've only used up about 25% of the fuel. So the car's only about 25% lighter. Uh, it's enough to go a little bit quicker but don't expect to start going you know, half a second, three quarters of a second quicker just because of the lower fuel. So we're on to lap 14 here, we did do a wee transition and we're going to come in at the end of our second stint on the mediums and stick on the hard tyres. So into the pits we come, getting our look at this pit stop, car stationary for 5.7 seconds, pit time just a fraction over the 10 seconds, and as I said that all calculates to 5.8 to 6 seconds loss on the racetrack. But out the pits we come, we're on the hard tyre. I don't think there's any real need to watch too much of this lap, we'll just go into fast forward mode and come out the last corner and we'll just a few hundred metres from the finish line we'll be able to take a look at the finishing time for this one. So it is looking promising at this point and we cross the line in, come on, there we go, 19 minutes 49.2 so I think that's 1.1 seconds faster than the one stop strategy. So there does seem to be a lot of potential in the two-stop strategy in terms of overall finishing time. But of course, this strategy will come with its own problems, which we'll take a little bit of a look at later on in the video. So as I said earlier on in the video, we don't know whether it's just going to be the hard tyre that's mandatory. If it is just the hard tyre that's mandatory, then there is the potential to do the no-stop strategy in this one. So tyre wear at time 7, it's not a sort of particularly tyre wear heavy track. Most of us have not a huge amount of corners on uh, Willow Springs. So the no stop is definitely possible on the hard tyre. The tyres hold up pretty well for the majority of the race I found on this run at a roundabout. So maybe this uh, last two laps I really was well, not really, really struggling with the tyre wear, but you could certainly feel uh, a degradation in the tyres compared to around about laps 8 and 9. You can see we actually set our fastest lap on lap 8 there. So uh, again, got a little sign there that the tyres hold up pretty well for this strategy. Uh, whether this is the way to go is uh, debatable. Well, not that too, uh, not too far away from the finishing line here. So we will get a look at the finishing time. Uh, I can see this strategy maybe having a purpose if you're starting from the back of the grid, uh, just trying to uh, work your way through the cars as they start making their pit stops. You can get some clear track and you're just able to sort of hammer in your lap times and I don't think this strategy is too far off the pace. Uh, this wasn't a great run on my behalf, certainly over the first two laps I definitely gave away two seconds. Uh, of course the sort of one of the dangers with this one is you're starting on the hard tyre so you don't get off the line quite as well as on the medium tyre. That's definitely something to take into account as well. Uh, so obviously for other strategies that's going to have an impact as well. But over the Finishing line we come, let's take a look at that finishing time, it's a 19 minutes 54.8, so around about 4 seconds slower than the other strategies. As I said, there's definitely 2 seconds to be gained on that one, just from the sort of mistakes and uh, I made in the first lap, or the first and second lap on that strategy, so I think that's more like a 1952.8, if I'm perfectly honest with you. So let's take a quick recap of what we just looked at there. We've got some of the information regarding the race up in the top left hand corner. 15 laps, medium hard tyres available. We'll treat it as the hard tyre being mandatory. Tyre at time 7, fuel consumption at times 2. So the one stop strategy was first with the 10 laps in the medium, 5 laps in the hard tyres and it was a 19 minutes 50.3. Now obviously there is other ways of doing the one stop strategy. You can start on the hard tyres. Maybe just do the five or six lap, maybe only four laps on the hard tyre hard tie before you move on to the medium. So the danger of that, of course, is you're making quite an early pit stop. You're going to be putting yourself into potential traffic problems, but if you can get some clean air, 
I think that could probably be a slightly quicker way to do it than the medium hard. But as I said, it does run its own dangers doing that. Next up was a two stop strategy, this came in at 19 minutes 49.2, so this was the fastest of the three strategies we ran. We did seven mediums, seven mediums, one hard. Many, many variations you can do in that, if you find yourself in traffic you can certainly cut one of those medium stints a little bit short, or maybe do a, little, like, a medium stint a little bit longer, but there's definitely a lot of potential in the two stop strategy. You're only really going to be able to do one lap in the hard tyres to kind of get the full benefit of it. Again, the danger of the two stop strategy is you're maybe putting yourself into some traffic that can kind of have a bit of an impact, but at the same time, you could get a pretty big undercut on some of the cars around you if you sort of manage to find a gap. And lastly, we had the no stop strategy, just doing 15 laps on the hard tyres. That all depends on whether it's just a hard tyre that's mandatory, whether that's possible. That finishing time was 19 minutes 54.8. Uh, as I said, there's certainly a couple of seconds to come off that, but that's the free strategy we run, and I think it's a fairly interesting race in prospect. Uh, personally, my gut feeling is telling me that the one-stop strategy will be the one that comes to the fore, than what most people will do. Uh, but it is good that there's at least options out there to sort of run a different strategy. And if you happen to be in a car or have a driving style that chews through the tyres, then you can rest in comfort that that two-stop strategy is there and has the potential to work out quite well as well. However, let's finish the guide here with a little bit of a lap guide. We're in the Ferrari 458 Italia Group 4. We've got my brake balance at plus 3. And we've come into turn 1 there. We're braking around about sort of 20 metres after the 100 metre board. Making sure we get the car into the apex of this second corner. There's a little bit of camber that helps the car round. Uh, down into fourth gear for this one. You're just sort of waiting and waiting and waiting until you think you can get on the throttles. The earlier you get on the throttle for this one, the better. Got up to turn number 3, braking just before the 50 metre board. This one's all about getting the line, sort of sacrifice your speed into the first part so you've got a sort of better line for these two corners here. Getting in as close to the sand as possible, on the power as early as possible, try not to run wide and you're braking just at the end of this kerb here. Probably the most important corner on the track this one because depending on your line and your speed, you carry all that all the way down this long sort of straight towards the final corner. And the final corner is a fairly infamous one in itself at Big Will. We're going to be sort of looking out for the 150 metre board. Uh, my sort of tip for this one is keep it as tight as possible. Break from the middle of the track so you've got a little bit of margin of error, particularly in the race. And you're looking for a little bit of a late apex on this one. Don't clip that kerb on the inside. That can unsettle the car, throw you out wide. And uh, if you do it really wrong, you end up in the pits. But that's a very, very quick and basic lap guide of Big Willow in the Ferrari 458, so hopefully there's been some useful stuff there, hopefully there's been some useful stuff throughout the video to help me get you prepared for this one, as I said I think it's a very interesting racing uh, prospect here, I'm really looking forward to this one, I'm going to hammer this one on the Womble Skipper account, try and get that DR up for the FIA starting on Wednesday, uh, please hit that like button, please hit that subscribe button if you like what I'm doing the channel, we're not a million miles away from 1000 subscribers now, so if you can help me get up there that would be great. But until then and the next video, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you on the next one. Goodbye now.